Today we're going to be looking at a project I built in the past and trying to build an upgraded version. No, it's not another BB-8 because I already built four of those over the years which worked in various different ways. Most of them had the mechanisms inside the ball and the head held on with magnets. This isn't actually that easy though because the droid still needs to be dynamically stable. This means it has to adjust its motor speeds and positions around 100 times a second to stay stable, otherwise it becomes a wobbly mess. It does this by reading an inertial measurement unit which includes a gyro and accelerometer and using a controller to adjust each of the six axes of the droid in real time. Of course each of the six axes needs to have the same centre of rotation in the middle of the ball which means there's quite a bit of creative mechanical design. The first droid I built like this didn't have any ability to lean to steer so it had to stop on the spot and use a flywheel for rotation. The next version did have a side to side axis and this is probably the one with the most features being able to move the ball in three axes as well as the head in another three axis. Lastly I built BB-9E with only parts bought from eBay for an official eBay and Disney promo at the time Star Wars Episode 8 came out. This was featured in the promo video with Colin Furs and the life-size TIE silencer that he built. But today we're going to look at the first BB-8 I tried to build and this one is totally different. The ball is mostly empty and the head has all the clever stuff in. The head actually balances on the ball like a two-wheel balancing robot but with four omnidirectional wheels. This is one of the first Arduino projects I've ever attempted though, so there are many improvements that could be made to it. It worked okay, but it's pretty temperamental and it only really liked driving on thick carpet. Since then, I've built quite a few balancing robots, including the LG robot and Sonic the Hedgehog, which also had active motor-driven suspension in each leg so it could lean to steer to absorb rough terrain. I also built a robot that runs along using a single row of legs similar to Theo Jansen's Strand Beast mechanism to see if a walking robot would balance in the same way as a wheeled robot. So I thought I'd have another go at making a ball balancing robot using all the knowledge that I've acquired since I built this version. I'm pretty sure we can make something a lot better. But before we look at the improvements, it's a quick ad from the video sponsor, and that is PCBWay. PCBWay provide both PCB manufacturing and PCB assembly, and that means as well as manufacturing the PCB, they can solder all the components on for you. As well as standard fiberglass PCBs, PCBWay can manufacture aluminium PCBs, flexible PCBs, and rigid flex PCBs, which are part rigid and part flexible. Prices start at just $5 for 10 standard PCBs and $30 for 10 PCBs with assembly. But new customers can get $5 credit and that means you can get 10 PCBs for free with your first order. PCBWay can also offer advanced services such as PCB design, x-ray inspection, electronic probe inspection, impedance control and various certification capabilities including ROHS and UL certification. Find out more now at PCBWay.com and I've put that link in the description to this video. And I'm actually going to be using PCBWay to make PCBs for projects in my channel in the future. Right, let's have a look inside this robot head. Well, let's see what's inside this less than perfect BB-8 head. Mostly a massive mess of wires. So let's start with the wheels. We've got four omnidirectional wheels, and that means they've got these little wheels all around the outside. That means that this pair of wheels can drive this way and these would slide. And that means we can control two axes at the same time to balance on the ball. Now the motors aren't really ideal. They do have gear heads on, but um, there's no wheel encoders here. So there's no way of accurately positioning the motor or controlling the speed of it, which is what we've got in all of the subsequent balancing robots. The wheel is a, a bit loose feeling as well. It looks like it's attached with hot glue because it's the wrong shaft diameter, so that won't have helped as well if any of those wheels start slipping. Around the top, we've got an Arduino Uno, which is dealing with the balancing, and that's only 8-bit at 16 megahertz, but it still should be enough to actually make a balancing robot. This is the inertial measurement unit. This is a spark fund device. And this one, we can read the gyro and accelerometer data, but we have to do our own maths to combine them, which is running on that 8-bit Arduino. So that's not as good as the results that we get for the angle and the tip in degrees from, say, an MPU 6050 or something that does that DMP on board. And that's what I've been using in subsequent builds. The motor driver for this is an L298 by the looks of it, which is dual channel. And it's only, I think, two amps a channel, which should be all right for those tiny motors. But it's a device that's probably 10 or 15 or 20 years old or something now. So it's not the most efficient, but it should be OK, I guess. And around the back, we've got the radio control receiver for a normal six channel handset. And that's plugged into another Arduino Pro Mini, it looks like. And I can't remember what the reason is for that, but it's probably because I didn't know what I was doing at the time. Overall, though, it's not the best build, of course. All these things are held on with elastic bands, and some of these things aren't fixed on at all. There is a piece of breadboard in the middle, still with uh, 
breadboard jumper wires all plugged in and some of those are actually glued onto things with hot glue. Obviously it's a mess of wires, so not the best quality build and I'm surprised it actually worked at all. And the ball I used is basically expanded polystyrene. They come in two halves, I've glued it together, painted PVA all over it and then painted it with liquid latex. And that's so that it gets a bit of grip and gives it a sort of harder surface. There are some dings and dents all over it and also the painting on here was hand painted and this was done at the time the first trailers just came out for Star Wars Episode 7 so no one really knew exactly what the details were on BB-8 so it's pretty much a guess. You'll also notice it rattles and that's because I filled it with ball bearings to try and slow down and decelerate it as it accelerates so that the balancing head didn't have such a hard job and that's the only way it really worked. So I might be repurposing this ball for this build by painting it a different colour but I'll have to get the ball bearings out. Either that or I'll try and find a fiberglass ball or something else like that. This time I'm using metal omnidirectional wheels. They're really similar to the last ones with the two rows of little wheels around the outside, but these are aluminium and they've got metal flanges on which fit on the motor properly. There's a grub screw there, so hopefully that will never come loose. And that means that the wheel will rotate properly. And the motors I'm using here are brushless motors. These are the Turning G 5055 280 kV motors that I use in quite a lot of other builds. You'll have noticed in the previous build that I've actually got four wheels in here and each one's on a little suspension arm. All we actually need though, of course, is three wheels and three motors. So it's like a tripod making contact with the ball. That does mean though that we'd have to do some vectoring to work out what speeds to run them at to move in perpendicular axis that we get out of the IMU. And that's gonna be quite tricky because it means even if we were to run in this direction, this wheel can just turn, but these ones are gonna have to slip slightly sideways. It does also mean that we can't use the maximum speed of this motor because these ones won't be able to go fast enough to catch it because we're not getting their full velocity. Now it's debatable what the pros and cons are between the two systems, but I'm actually gonna go for four motors again. And that means they can just run in straight lines this way. These ones will slide and straight lines this way. And these two will slide. That makes it much easier to actually sort out where to run the motors in relation to the two axis of the inertial measurement unit. It's gonna measure if the robot tips over and how fast it needs to drive. It does mean, of course, we've got a situation where we don't have a tripod anymore. So one wheel could lift off the surface. However, the ball's pretty round and I'm gonna put them on suspension arms again. So it should be pretty forgiving. So it's going to look something like this with the four wheels and each one's in a cradle and it's on a pivot which means that it can raise up and down and then we're going to put that on a sort of spring. In fact, we're going to use a foam pad as part of the suspension arm. So each wheel is going to have a cover, which is going to cover it nicely down to the ball and the wheels are spread slightly further than they were in the BB-8 build, so it's slightly bigger. And the top of the cover is actually going to stop that wheel from pushing all the way up. So we're going to rest it on there between this bridge part that I've got and the top surface of that cover with a foam pad of about 10 millimeters thick and that's gonna act as the suspension. Of course, we've got plenty of space for the electronics and batteries in the middle, which fit just in there and that's gonna carry two O drives and a Teensy 4.1 microcontroller. So I fitted the motors into their cradles there and each one's got a block of foam on top which is going to act as a cushion for the suspension. Each one's got an encoder on the back and each of these encoders is an 8192 CPR encoder which means we get 8192 counts per revolution. It's so pretty accurate and that'll allow us to accurately control the motor velocity and also whatever position we want to send it to. I've already fitted the fourth motor into the chassis here which has got these removable mudguard pieces which is where the motors fit. And of course that also supports the block of foam so that this will be pressed against it and that will give me some suspension as that foam squishes. So I fitted all four of them and now there's a tiny bit of movement in there. We don't really need very much, we just need to make sure those wheels are seated properly on the ball. But that looks pretty good. And of course each one's got an encoder and the motor wires to go to our brushless motor drivers. 
So that seems to fit nicely on there and all my wheels run smoothly and it should be to move in any direction. Now I'm a bit worried about the ball being too soft and the wheels digging in and the little metal bits in between grinding on the ball. We might have to file them back a bit or get a more rigid ball. But as it is, I did the CAD for this by drawing a line right from the middle of the ball up to the wheel to get the angle right and planning everything from there. So they should be pretty flat on the ball as they move around. And that means that both sets of the inner and outer little wheels around the outside should go and grip on the ball perfectly well. And hopefully having that suspension in there will just help get all those wheels seated. They all seem to be gripping fine, actually. So I don't think there's going to be any problems there. So I'm pretty happy with the chassis. It's much better than what I had last time. I don't want to make any more Star Wars droids, though, but I still want it to be a character. So I've decided it's going to be HAL 9000 from Stanley Kubrick's The 2001 A Space Odyssey, balancing on a ball. We've got an electronics mount that fits on there and that will hold motor drivers either side, the electronics on the top and batteries right in the middle there. The next piece is this, which is the bottom of the head. And that's got these pieces that stick down that fit perfectly in between the mud guards. We've also got the middle here, which actually holds the eye. And then we've got the top of the head, which is another separate piece. And that fits on just like that. And I've also made these pieces which fit on the bottom of the mud guards, and that just covers the wheel and it fits the profile of the ball all the way around. I'm pretty happy with the mechanical build of the chassis that I've got here. It's definitely more substantial than last time, even though it is slightly heavier because those motors are bigger and we still have to put the batteries in. So hopefully the ball will hold up. It may be a bit soft and we'll have to get one that's more rigid. I'll be painting it black anyway to match the new droid, if you can call it that. And next time we'll be coming back to put the electronics in and the control system that's going to make it balanced and also make it radio controlled, hopefully, and also putting in the red eye. So don't forget to subscribe to check out more updates on this project and all the other projects. You can also support me on Patreon or for a YouTube channel membership, which really makes all the difference to the projects. And those links are in the description below, along with my merchandise store where you can get mini dog t-shirts and various other designs of things that I've built over the years. All right, that's all for now.